Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation here in Spain, day 334 of the current situation. And the debate about whether or not bars and restaurants are safe places during a pandemic is back on the front pages of the papers today, but more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation. You can see your name here. Thanks to people that bought merchandise. And a big thanks, as always, to my patrons on Patreon for your support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, bars and restaurants here in Spain, are they a safe place to visit during a pandemic of this magnitude? One judge in the Basque country apparently thinks that they are. And as we can see here in this article, the Superior Court agrees with the hoteliers and authorizes their reopening in the Basque country municipalities in the red zone. The judicial decision represents a setback for the Basque government, which will have to review its restrictive measures to stop the pandemic. Oxygen for the hoteliers and a severe setback for the Basque government. Bars and restaurants are open again as of last Tuesday in those municipalities in El Scadi that are in the red zone. This has been decided by the Superior Court of Justice of the Basque Country, whose ruling has accepted on Tuesday the appeal in which the sector requested to return to activity in the areas of maximum transmission, vetoed since December the 12th by the Basque Government, as they consider that their activity is not the origin of the increase in infections. So the Basque Hoteliers Association, successful in their attempt to overturn the government's decision to close those establishments that were in areas that were considered red zones since last December. However, and as can be expected, this judicial decision is not without controversy, and the judge that made the ruling has been thrown into the spotlight. As we can see here, the judge who reopens bars in El Scadi equates anti-COVID measures with the Middle Ages. The judge who presides over the chamber that has allowed the reopening of bars in El Scadi, Luis Ángel Garrido, has affirmed that an epidemiologist is a general practitioner who has taken a course. And in his opinion, the measures against COVID-19 adopted in Spain and in all countries do not differ much from those that occurred in the Middle Ages. And the judge in question apparently has a WhatsApp status that reads enough with confinement. He is a huge fan of the Van Morrison song, No More Lockdown. So there we go, a controversial decision by that judge in the Basque country, a fan of the Van Morrison song, No More Lockdown, No More Lockdown, No More Government Overreach. I myself am a fan of Van Morrison. Now, on the topic of easing restrictions here in Spain, the Madrid government has also said that they are contemplating giving people a little bit more freedom. As we can see here, Ignacio Aguado advances the Madrid plan, curfew at 11pm and a flexible closure of hotel businesses. Madrid will also use the Wii Zinc and Vista Alegre stadiums for mass vaccination and will ask to use the AstraZeneca vaccine in people over the age of 55. The vice president of the Madrid community, Ignacio Aguado, has revealed that the will of the government is to make the restrictions more flexible and as soon as possible to stop the third wave of COVID infections. So it seems clear that politicians here in Spain, or at least in Madrid, are going to stick with their policy of opening up again when the health situation gets better, and of course closing again when the health situation gets worse. This is the continuous cycle that we are in. It hasn't really proven to be successful up until now, but the people in charge obviously see this as the best thing to do. Now, as we just saw, the Madrid government wants to make the AstraZeneca vaccine available to people over the age of 55 or between the ages of 55 and 65, and various other regions around Spain are also in favour of a higher age limit for that vaccine. Madrid, Andalusia and Catalonia feel the government's decision to restrict the coronavirus shots to people under 55, while the WHO insists it is safe for over 65s. Following the Spanish government's decision that the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine will only be administered to people between the ages of 18 and 55, several regional leaders said that they would seek to raise that threshold to 65. Andalusian Premier Juan Manuel Moreno and the Deputy Premier of the Madrid region Ignacio Iguado both said they would make this request at the Wednesday gathering of the central and regional health officials known as the Interterritorial Council of the National Healthcare System, which meets every week to discuss coronavirus policy. And on the topic of vaccines, the Russian vaccine against coronavirus Sputnik V will not be available in the EU until the end of spring. The vaccine against the coronavirus produced by Russia, Sputnik V, is still pending approval by the European Medicines Agency for use in the EU bloc. So the Sputnik V vaccine suffering a setback in the European Union. Remember that we had a setback with the AstraZeneca vaccine as well. So with so many setbacks, it's no wonder that the vaccine plan here in Spain is barely progressing. Now let's have a look at the health data around the country by looking at a map of Spain and various autonomous communities. We'll start off here with a map of the country as a whole. 
and we can see that the countrywide risk level is still extreme. The total amount of cases there now over the 3 million mark. The accumulated incidence rate now down to 584. There have been 1,748 COVID-related deaths in the last seven days. There are currently 24,821 people hospitalized around the country with COVID, and there are 4,548 people in ICUs, which is around 41% of all ICUs in the country. The Valencian community now, the risk level there is still extreme, the total amount of cases, the accumulated incidence rate now down to 879. There are currently 3,325 people hospitalized in the Valencian community with COVID, and there are 685 people in ICUs, which is around 55% of all ICUs in the Valencian community, still quite high. The Canary Islands now, and the risk level there is high, the total amount of cases, the accumulated incidence rate for the last 14 days, 149. There have been 12 COVID-related deaths in the last seven days, 299 people currently hospitalized in the Canary Islands with COVID, and there are 79 people in ICUs, which is around 17% of all ICUs in the Canary Islands. So a tale of two Spains as far as the pandemic is concerned. Now the royal family here in Spain is back in the news again as they announced yesterday that they have decided to send their daughter, Princess Leonor, the next in line to the throne here in Spain to Wales to further her education. Princess Eleanor will study high school in Wales from next year. The cost of the two courses will be €75,000 and will be paid by the kings with their annual allowance. So the royal family announcing that they will send the future Queen of Spain to Wales to go to high school. Now you would think that a simple story like this would be without controversy, but not here in Spain. And as we can see here, the state broadcaster RTVE has decided to relieve from their positions those responsible for the controversial headline, Leonor is leaving Spain like her grandfather, when talking about her studies in Wales. The head of the state broadcaster, Rosa Maria Mateo, has regretted deeply the serious error that has occurred this morning during the broadcast of the TV program for a headline that read Leonor is leaving home like her grandfather when reporting on the studies of the princess. So the state broadcaster getting into trouble comparing the time that the princess is going to spend overseas with the self-imposed exile of her grandfather, the former King Juan Carlos. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Shiny Shiny Things. So, teachers are essential workers. Great. Does anyone know if the several thousand auxiliares the conversación are included since we work in the same schools with those teachers? No SMS yet from my private health insurer. Yes, Shiny Shiny, thanks for the comment. And that's the million dollar question. Will auxiliares de conversación be included in the vaccination plan with teachers from the primary and secondary system here in Spain? Common sense tells me that the logical answer to that question is yes. However, common sense doesn't always prevail. And as we saw in a comment a few videos ago, some people in this system are not even getting paid on time, so I wouldn't put my hopes on getting vaccinated at the same time either. But you never know, and like with most things nowadays, we're just going to have to wait and see. One here from Joe, at least the famous Cordova de Madrid is going down again, 711, down 27% in nine days. Maybe the virus is running out of people to infect in Madrid. Possibly there is a certain level of herd immunity in Madrid. Good to see that the We Think Center and the Palacio de Vista Alegre are going to be used as mass vaccination centers. Hopefully this will speed up vaccination. Madrid is considering pushing the curfew back to 11 p.m. Yeah, Joe, thanks for the comment. You're right, case numbers here are going down. That was to be expected, of course, because as we have seen, they go up, they go down, they go up, they go down. So we're just going to have to wait and see if they stay down or whether they go back up again when things start to open up. Herd immunity in Madrid, maybe that could be one of the factors. Certainly a lot of people in this autonomous community have had the virus, so that could be one of the factors. And by using these two stadiums as vaccination centers, I imagine that the Madrid community is also looking to speed up their vaccination plan. And so they should be because it is extremely slow at the moment. One here from Jamie. Hello, Stuart. I have a few questions, if you don't mind. What is a typical dish for you, and what's your favorite Spanish meal? Oh, and one more question, please. If you eat late like the Spanish, do you have trouble sleeping? Yeah, Jamie, thanks for the comment, and no, I don't mind answering some questions. The first one, for example, I normally have dinner between 8 and 8.30 p.m. when I am at home. If I go out to a restaurant, if I take the family out to a restaurant, for example, I also like to get there fairly early, always before 9, and try to be out of the place by 10. It's a bit difficult to do nowadays because of the curfews and restrictions, but in normal times, that would be the case. But it's different if we go out with friends, but unfortunately, that's also difficult nowadays. But in normal circumstances, if we go out with friends, normally it's around 10, 10.30. And I'll answer the final question there now, because yes, I do find it difficult to sleep sometimes if I eat too much late at night. 
And my favorite Spanish meal, I don't really have one. I like most food in this country, particularly in the north of the country. Asturias, for example, has fantastic cuisine. But if I had to choose one, it would be some type of fish dish, most likely merluza a la vasca or merluza a la gallega. One here from Ross Bay Colt. I have a pretty decent share of friends who live in Spain, and most of them aren't parents yet. The ones that do have kids only have one. Also, I've noticed how many of my friends and Spanish men in general wait to have children. I've seen men in their late 40s, early 50s become first-time fathers. Compared to the rest of Europe, I have to believe that's pretty old. Yeros Bacolt, thanks for the comment. You're right, a lot of people do wait a long time to become parents here in Spain. I'm not sure whether it's late 40, early 50s. I'm sure there are a few people around that have waited that long. But I think for a lot of people nowadays, it's more likely mid to late 30s. And there's various reasons for this. For example, people sometimes enter the labor market quite late here in Spain, later than other European countries. Another problem could be job security. People don't feel secure in their jobs, don't have that economic security, and therefore prefer not to have children straight away. They prefer to wait. Sometimes it's too late and time often slips away. And that could also be one of the reasons why people don't have big families because they just don't have the time. And one child sometimes is all that people can have. And then there's another group of people that just choose not to have children. In my circle, for example, there's three or four couples that have decided to take that route. So those could be some of the reasons why the birth rate here in Spain is generally quite low. One here for Spain 13, a plug for visual politic YouTube, the collapse of the pensions in Spain. It touches on Spain's lowest in the world and declining fertility rate, demographic winter, and over-reliance on public sector jobs. Think Spain is in deep SH1T now? Just wait a few years. Yes, yeah, Spain13, thanks for the comment. I have seen that video by Visual Politics. It's quite a good one if you want to check it out on YouTube. In fact, a lot of videos that that channel does are very interesting. And they're right, Spain has a serious problem with its pension system, but very few governments are willing to tackle the problem because it would mean political suicide and the changes that need to be made would not be very popular. I gave English classes around 20 years ago to a high-ranking public servant in the social security system, and I asked her that question, is the Spanish system viable long term? And she told me 20 years ago that no, it is a system that is going to collapse. The demographics, as we know, are heading in the wrong direction, and you don't need to be a genius to realize what is going to happen. So some huge changes are needed, but who's going to be the politician that puts their hand up and offers to make those changes? I don't know, but I don't see too many people coming forward. And finally, one here from John Continuous. Thanks, Stuart, for your channel. Always interesting and informative. Please keep this going as we are getting closer to the possibility of arranging holidays in Spain later this year. Well, we can hope, can't we? Yeah, John, thanks for the comment. And you're right. You can hope to visit Spain later this year. Hopefully things will have improved and the health situation will be better than it currently is. As you know, we're all putting our hopes on the success of vaccines and hopefully they can do their job and have the desired effect and politicians can stick to their promises of having 70% of the population here in Spain vaccinated by the summer months. As you said, we live in hope. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.